time for our weekly debate discussion here on Breakfast Television. I can guarantee you, though, we have not been inhaling the fumes, thankfully, over at the race course uh, Speak for at the track. <laughs> uh, let's uh, meet our panel to discuss this very important topic. First off, Bruno Delorme is a professor at Marianopolis. Right. He also teach at Concordia and McGill. You specialize in sports management and marketing. Uh, Massimo Lacasse is the owner of Buenanote uh, here in Montreal. Christopher Curtis is a reporter at the Montreal Gazette. And of course, Laura joins me as well on the panel. I wanted to start off by talking about you know, the economic impact and who else to talk to about this than you, Massimo. What does this weekend mean for your business? Um, it's, sometimes it's, uh, it's hard to describe because the numbers are so, uh, so uh, above everything else that we do. I, I say that in this week, we do what we do in January and February. The whole, the whole two months, we make in one week this week. So that's like, it's undescribable, like the, uh, the influx of money that comes into the city this week. And, and I don't speak only for myself. I, I think the rest of the city also, well, in our industry, in the hospitality industry, it's it's a humong it's indescribable. To get this Grand Prix, uh, the government had to spend a lot of money. 187 yeah. million dollar deal over 10 years. They also agreed to a renovation of the track, 30 million dollars in that. And I guess, uh, Chris, I'll, I'll ask you, what is the balance here between investment and handout? Well, like I don't want I don't want to begrudge someone like Massimo. Uh, having this amazing week because you know the 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 municipal government regularly wreaks havoc on on businesses with construction <laughs> yeah. and, what have you. Like, and i do i do definitely feel your pain but i mean you you look at something like like you look in the news yesterday and and the thing the government seems to be most fond of saying lately is oh, the times are tough you know we got to tighten our belts guys times are real tough and then you know you get to this week and you see this like exorbitant display of of wealth and you think well, like are times really that hard uh, they just they just closed a mental health clinic or a mental health service at the Douglas where like they're helping suicidal teens, and you think like where's the balance? Like uh, times are tough, guys, but uh, these uh, these millionaires over here they, they can they can yeah. have their due. And I think you just hit something there for me because you know I I love the Grand Prix. I think it's great for the city, but <clears throat> a lot of these glitzy parties that we hear about uh, are for you know a very small major a small percentage of people because as you said times are tough. Not everyone can afford to come to Bonanotte for 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 supper during Grand Prix or go to the glitzy parties that are happening. So the government is putting in all this money but really not everyone gets to enjoy it and, and Bruno I want to bring you in here because there are a lot of studies done sure a study says oh it's 90 million dollars a year economic benefit then we find yeah. another study that says no actually it was 42 million and we have another study showing right. that we spend 18 million a year we get only eight million dollars in tax revenue what do the studies say about the grant yeah, and other I, events? I have yet to find a consensus among the studies there's one a good one a few years ago comparing Montreal to Australia in terms of Grand Prix yeah. same size same population size and they estimate Estimated between 30 and 40 million in economic spin-offs. Uh, others have gone as low as 15 million. I think in business, in businesses, as uh, Massimo can attest to, the more um, money uh, that you make uh, above your costs, uh, then you're a winner. But th there is no one clear-cut figure. That's what I mean. And if if 18 brings you 50, we'd all jump in on we'd that business, it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, and it's like you have to think. What I what I what I mention is that economic woes that the city lives and the, the difficulties that our restaurants live. It's like Formula One unfortunately brings a lot of people out of the woods. A lot of people out of the end a lot of people that if Formula One is not here, how many restaurants would be closing? How many restaurants are like uh, give us Formula One and we'll catch up and same well, things is only four days, Max. I mean you still yeah, have but the rest the, of the year. But but you put yourself in such a uh, in such difficult financial difficulties because of everything that we go through like what's happening yeah. on Saint Denis that whatever that you can't wait for formula 1 to come yeah. in and, and you know you got to think the suppliers the the butcher makes money this week the guy who sells mm -hmm. fish makes money the the girl at Holt Renfrew on Monday will make money when when the waitress goes and spend her money over there so it's like it, 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 it it's also i say What's the money being spent next week also, you know, with everything that comes in this week? So there's, it's not only the 50 million that's, that's made this week, it's also what's made 
going forward. We have to, you know? we have to remember that, you know, 2009, not too long ago, we didn't yeah. have a Grand Prix, right? So yeah. we do have some examples of oh, what happens yeah. when we don't have the event. One thing that's undeniable is uh, the target audience for the Grand Prix, and 50% of it comes from outside of Quebec, either from Ontario or rest of the world. And that's the number one um, economic event in Canada in terms of international draw. For a week, Montreal feels like a New York, Paris, or London, but 50% come from out of town. It feels like something out of the decaying Roman Empire. You walk, you walk between like Peel and Stanley, where all the strip clubs are, and you're like, Jesus, what is going on? There's people everywhere. Uh, I want to throw this out to the panel, but we're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, we're going to discuss more of the F1, other sports as well. Because let's face it, guys, you look at other cities that have F1 races. You look at the Dubai race. It seems like their streets are plated in gold. Uh, not so much here in Montreal. <laughs> that more and is ahead right here on Breakfast We're Television. Waiting. Keep it locked in Sun City. It really brings in people from all over the world. I think it's a worthwhile mm -hmm. venture. The commerce, they buy, they eat at the restaurants, like where we just had our lunch. Uh, and I think promoting, you know, sport throughout the world is a positive thing. Why not the corporations get involved in paying for that? Let the government pay for things that really matter, like education and health. A good point brought up uh, by some of the people we asked on the street about that. Of course, the Grand Prix happening this weekend. They're still looking for a title sponsor. They don't have a title sponsor. They need more corporate support. But in the meantime, they're asking for money from governments. Let's talk about, you know, we mentioned about the tourists. But there really are, there's got to be a positive impact for Montrealers, people who live here, that get to sort of experience this this weekend, isn't there? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, a lot of Montrealers uh, treat it like, uh, I, I call it New Year's Eve in the middle of summer, you know? So it's like <laughs> a lot of people go out, or, or people, if you have somebody from out of town, what do you tell them? you got to come Formula One weekend. It's crazy. It's amazing. You see the city at its finest every because everybody spruces up the restaurant, spruces up the city. So it's like... A lot of people have a lot of events to go out to, and we notice that through the years, a lot of corporate, comp a lot of local companies, they'll do their corporate events this week because they wanna, they wanna show their clients from out of town what our city really looks like. Def so definitely maximizing yeah. the exposure there. Exactly. I guess we gotta bring in some other sports. Your Mayor Danny yeah. Coderre, he hasn't hidden the fact he wants to bring a baseball team back. Yeah. That's yeah. gonna cost a billion dollars. A, a billion dollars. Yeah. Build a <laughs> baseball stadium for that. They've spent 200 million. The Quebec government spent 200 million dollars up in Quebec City. And they don't even have a team. Uh, Bruno, what do you think? Is this a wise use of public funds? Yeah, I, I think the two issues are different, the hockey versus the baseball issue. Um, I think uh, the economics of baseball have changed since the Expos left. There's a lot more TV dollars. I think there's a, enough TV dollars for every team that you can pay, pay, meet payroll just on the TV dollars alone. So the economics work in that regard. Uh, that said, we need an owner with deep pockets to fund the stadium. Um, it's got to be a corporation, some in the telecom industry, um, uh, you know, who, uh, a, a company that wants content for their but the media, owner, media the owner is, is not going to pay for the stadium. It's not like, like, you look at these situations where a government forks up money, no one's gaming the system. That's become the system. You look at the United States over the past 15 years, they've spent $12 billion in federal, federal dollars to invest in these stadiums. And what do they get in return? I don't know. It's hard to say. So what do these owners do, these, these sporting team owners? They, they come up like J.D. Rockefeller, I'm a self-made businessman, but when they need a stadium, all of a sudden they're Karl Marx. You know, like, and then when the money from the stadium comes yeah. in, they go back to being you know, J.D. Rockefeller and double finger to the, to the tax. Okay, rate. so you bring up something really interesting because obviously it comes down to competing. We have to compete globally with yeah. other cities, especially in the States, yeah. who are handing out money, taxpayer money. Yeah. So at a certain point, we have to play the game too, right? You gotta pay to play, right? I mean, that's what, that's what it is. It's like we can't go around saying, Oh, I went to uh, Toronto, our neighbors to the left. Is it? Right. And, and they're fourth <laughs> professional uh, sports team, and we're, we're down to the, to the Canadians and the impact, and, and that's it. So it's like. Yeah, but shouldn't uh, we just focus on what we have instead of spending, you know, what is it, 400 million in Quebec City, uh, possibly a billion uh, for baseball? Laura, I know you love baseball. I love I baseball. Do. I know you love but baseball. Wouldn't you want to see it? A, I would love to see it, but at a billion dollars, and that woman said it, I mean, the money could be going elsewhere. She was going health and education. God, I'm just going to talk about the potholes in our, you know, our streets. <laughs> I mean, let's start by fixing those first. But an often <laughs> forgotten fact, uh, it gets lost in the media, but the, uh, the Bell Center, formerly Molson Center, was 100% privately yeah. funded uh -huh. by oh, the Molsons. Really? Uh, yeah. We don't hear and, that much and nowadays. And I remember the stories of Claude Brochu, owner of the Expos, 
telling the Canadians, what are you yeah. doing? We're not going to be able to get our free stadium yes. if you do that. And if that ended but, up But, I mean, happening. that's what it comes down to. You look at Daryl Katz, the owner of the Edmonton Oilers, threatened to move the team to Seattle. Yes. Like, you're, you're going to move Edmonton to Seattle, really? Like, these, these owners who come in, like, these benevolent, this is our team, these are our fans, we care. No, it's incredibly selfish. Let me play devil's advocate for everyone here at the panel because we spend lots of money on the arts. We throw you're tons right, of money right. on the arts, and it doesn't seem to get the same kind of flack that sports does. A lot of people say, you know what, more people enjoy sports on a daily basis than they enjoy the quote-unquote arts. And, and the, sorry, in the sports, and, and we got to know that it, it brings money in, right? I mean, 50,000 people at the Olympic Stadium or wherever we're going to end up playing baseball on, for 81 dates. I mean, how many hot dogs is that? How many people, how many jobs, how many parking spots are you selling? How many bus rides are you selling? But that's it's, the problem. There's no, like, accurate, and I think you mentioned it before, Bruno. There's no why? accurate data to know exactly if our investment <laughs> is getting paid back. But every time we, we talk about the... The les retombées, sorry, yeah. of, of, sure. it, we always say, well, we don't know exactly, but there is money, guys. I mean, it's like, you know, the bus ticket to get to the stadium is money. You got the bus driver driving who now has, is making overtime money. That's money being made. It's, 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 it's got, this uh, displacement you know, it's of like, funds. It's clear, uh, Max, you're making money this yeah. week more than you were ever making. Yeah. Um, this displacement of funds means oh, but uh, some guy in Boucherville or in Longueuil, his bar or his restaurant yeah. might be empty this yeah. weekend. The, they're spending the money at uh, Buenanote or yeah. Jellyfish, for okay. example. Yeah. So one winner, one loser. Yeah. You're, you're, taking with, you're taking the risk element out of business. You're, mm -hmm. you're, you're yeah. basically telling the owner, like, don't worry, we got your back. And believe me, the owner does not have your back. On a cold and windy day, you will be on the street corner with the wind blowing in your face. He won't. But I think we can all agree it's pretty nice to have the name Montreal mentioned in the same breath as Dubai as and London. Riots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, it has I been a, a very <laughs> spirited debate, uh, and I thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Bruno Delore and Professor at Marianopolis, uh, Chris, uh, Christopher Curtis from the Montreal Gazette, Massimo Lacasse, owner of Buonanote, and of course Laura.